Okay, so here we are. We are talking about how to facilitate mindfulness and how to facilitate, it's called expressive writing. Onward. Here's a definition. Mindfulness, being present here and now. I'll say it again, being present here and now. So if that's if that's what we do, then we're being mindful. Paying attention to thoughts, bodily sensations, emotions in the external environment with kindness, non-judgment, and curiosity. That is really almost worth memorizing. That is so good being present here and now, paying attention to thoughts, bodily sensations, emotions, external environment with kindness, non judgment, and curiosity. Next, mindfulness practice. Is your mind full or are you mindful? Think about that. How many times is our mind just like, ah, TMI, too much information? So part of the practice is being quiet. So it's a time out to tune in and pay attention. And I like the acronym. I made it up called CALM, Centered and Living in the Moment. How about that? And what I say to myself is, come on, Big Ed, calm down. You're too wired up. And it happens. We all get wired up. We all get excited. We all get nervous. We all get scared. We all get, you know, it's all that agitation. And then the, the self-talk is calm. The practice is how to unhook from insistent thought. And what's an insistent thought? It's the one that comes over and over, over and over, over and over. And you go, I'm done with that. And it just keeps coming to you. So there's a way of letting it be, letting it go, taking a breath and being calm and present in the moment. And that's that takes time and, and skill to be good at that. So in this moment, and you can you can say that this is an affirmation right now and say it quietly to yourself. In this moment, I'm aware. And I'm non-judgmental. And to me, when I use non it's almost like my mind says, well, I really am judgmental, but I'm not trying to be not judgmental, but I am, you know. So the, the positive, rather than saying non-judgmental, is I'm tolerant. I'm tolerant. In this moment, I'm tolerant. And I'm accepting. I am accepting what is. That's a big deal there. Mm -hmm. I may not like it, it in this moment. And I'm compassionate. I'm kind. I'm loving to myself, to others. And then when I'm adding, I'm whole. Now, I, this is real important. You can be broken and you can be whole. Whole is a state of mindfulness where you accept all the parts of yourself. The parts that hurt, the parts that weep, the parts that cry, the parts that long, but I accept it and I'm whole, accepting who I am, how I am in this moment. So again, the, the, the affirmation is I'm aware, I'm tolerant, I'm compassionate, and I am whole. And with a mindfulness practice, I'm cultivating inner peace. Inner peace is an outcome. Inner peace is a quality. Inner peace is, is where we want to be as much as we can be. So mindfulness helps us to get to a place of inner peace, even for a moment and a moment, a disturbance and a moment or, or not. Next. Can I ask a quick question? I guess so. Oh, thank you. Back to the other slide. I didn't, um, I heard what you said about calm, but I didn't have a chance to write it down. The All right. It's, and it's I, I, it means centered and living in the moment. Think about that. I'm centered. I'm not out of my mind. I'm not out of my body. I'm not, you know, I'm not flying around. Well, then I'm embodied. Thank you. And I'm living in the moment. You're welcome. Here comes the next one. I'm very proud of this one. I was listening to a talk by Pema Chodron. 
C-H-O-D-R-O-N. Had a white, she sketched this out. And it makes good sense to me. And I, I think this can really help us. That in the center of that diagram is a comfort zone. And, and really, what is that? That's your home. That's where you live. That's who you are. That's where you come to find safety, right in the middle. And then around it, and it's, it, it could have been circle, 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 but this, this is my primitive way of drawing things. It's my art for the moment, is challenges. So within our, we, we are good and calm in the moment. We're in our comfort zone. We're safe and sound, and then around us is challenges. And within us are challenges. And that part of us that is whole and well and loving and caring can, can respond to challenges effectively. And the more challenges, so challenges are just the stuff we deal with every day. It's what is. Oh my gosh, I have to pay the bills. Oh, I have to fix the roof. Oh, I have to deal with my upset. Oh, you know, I'm having difficulties, all those things. Those are part of our daily life that largely we take care of. But then what's beyond that? The threats, the red box, you see that? That's, those are the big what ifs. What if I can't pay the bills? What if the disease eats me up? What if, what if, what if? Tom Petty says, most things I worry about never happen anyway. So what if are the threats? And threats are legit. We have threats. The world is threatened. You know, what if the bomb goes off? But that can rattle our cage. And the difference between a challenge is it's part of everyday life that we manage. We don't, we don't get rid of it. We deal with it. We cope. It's part of our wholeness is being able to deal with challenge. And the more challenge, the bigger our comfort zone. That's important. We grow in capacity, when not when we shrink, but when we expand and we have capacity to cope and to respond. And then when we have threats, we call for help. Big statement there. It's too much for me. Ah, it freaks me out. It blows my mind. It makes me scared. Who do you call? Dr. B. Who do you call? Your best friend. Who do you call? Your doctor. You call your therapist. You, you call for your community, really. Is that we're not alone. The threats that we face require arm to arm, soul to soul, heart to heart support so that we feel safe and, and capable of dealing with more than we can deal with alone. And skill unskillful people let the threat blow them right out of the water. And then around that, all that tan zone is distractions. Holy moly, the big drop. He said, she said, social media, news media, all this drama that goes on around us. And for us to be mindful, we need to pull back and not get absorbed, get enmeshed, get carry that around in our space. So mindfulness is the ability to find our comfort zone, to sit with it, to be with it, to walk with it, to stay aware, stay awake, stay calm, to look at challenges as opportunities, to respond skillfully. If they're too much, they become threats, we call for help and to deal with our inner life. I remember I had a therapist, she said, Ed, how's your inner life? I go, gosh, that's something. Most people don't even talk like that. But the inner life, how are you handling being you? And even today, people go, how's it going, Ed? Which to me is, how's my inner life? How's my outer life? I am not my circumstances. So I don't describe my circumstances. I don't describe all the threats that are inside and around me, I just go, I'm doing pretty well, thanks. The phrase, don't bite the hook. Well, there's certain things that just, imagine you're a salmon and there's some bait and all of a sudden the bait's dropped and you bite the hook and they pull you in the boat and you're cooked. So the hook are the things that make you nuts. 
They're the triggers. They're, they're those things that get you upset. And then before you know it, you've lost your mindfulness. So notice it, watch it. If you bite it, spit it out, but try not to bite the hook over and over again. Thank you, Pema Chodron, to give me this insight to share this with you. Next. All right, mindfulness-based intervention. This is for the academics, because this is right brain, left brain, mid brain, all integrated together. And mindfulness-based intervention, it's a concept of mindfulness defined as the ability to observe thoughts, body sensation or feeling in the present moment non-judgmentally. And it goes back pretty far. I did a mindfulness meditation course on my farm in 1970, 10-day Vipassana insight meditation, and we brought teachers from India. It was the first time they came to the United States, and that grew into being Insight Meditation Center, and which is now a very wonderful way of practicing. Meditation is not exactly mindfulness. It's a subset of mindfulness, and I'll explain that. But this mindful in, in, intervention in computer programs of stress reduction, you see the reference and, and mindfulness-based cognitive therapy, dialectic behavior therapy, acceptance, commitment therapy, et cetera. So it's used in clinical practice. It's used to help people, to treat people, to deal with post-traumatic stress, to deal with depression, to deal with all kinds of behavioral issues. And then research shows positive outcome for mindfulness-based in intervention targeting depression, anxiety, stress, eating disorder, pain, addiction, sleep, and relapse. That's pretty cool. That's really cool. And this is something that we can bring into our program, et cetera. Mechanisms have been proposed on the impact of psychological function, such as alteration to memory, attention, awareness. I'm not sure if it's metta, which is loving kindness in Buddha, or just kind of multi-level thinking and seeing and feeling. I think maybe that's what it is. It's more dimensional. Decentering, ruminating, like me some rumination sometime, and emotional regulation. So this is a wonderful evidence-based value of practicing mindfulness and doing mindfulness in groups. Next. All right, I got a song. And I sing this to myself when I wake up in the middle of the night. I sing this to myself when I go to, to, to meditate, just needing to reset and refocus. And the teacher's name is Thich Nhat Han. There's wonderful YouTubes by him. We're with him, doing some retreat with him. And I'm going to, you can unmute yourself now. And I'm going to say a phrase and you say it back and then I'll, I'll sing a melody, but we're not going to sing together. So, so just see, put yourself in a mindful state. <laughs> also, kind of visualize what you're saying. Don't just say words, see the words. So I'm going to say it, then you say it. Breathing in. Breathing, breathing in. Breathing, in. breathing there in. There you go. Breathing out. Breathing out. Breathing, breathing out. out. Breathing in. Breathing, breathing in. in. Breathing in. Breathing out. Breathing, Breathing out. out. I am blooming. I am blooming. I am blooming. Like a flower. Like, like a flower. flower. Like a flower. I am fresh. I am fresh. I am fresh. I am fresh. As to do. As to do. As to do. As to do. I am solid. I am solid. I am solid. As a mountain. As a mountain. As a mountain. As a mountain. Again, you know, be these things. You can even make hand gestures. I am firm. I am, I am firm. firm. I am firm. As the earth. As the earth. I am free. 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 I'll come back to that last line. Breathing in. Breathing, breathing, in. Breathing, breathing in, in. Breathing, out. Breathing, out. breathing out, breathing out, breathing out, breathing in, breathing, breathing, in. breathing in. in, breathing out, breathing, breathing in, out. breathing out, breathing I am, out. I am water, I am water, I am water, reflecting, reflecting, 
What is real? What is real? What is true? What is true? What is true? What is true? And I feel. And I feel. There's space. There's space. Deep inside me. Deep inside me. Deep inside me. Deeper, deep. Deep inside me. Deep inside me. Deep inside me. Deep inside me. One more time. Deep inside me. Deep inside me. Deep inside me. Deep inside me. I am free. I am free. 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 I am 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 free. We are 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 free. I'll be 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 free. So I know I'll be free. kind of, you know, doesn't do doesn't do harmony well together. Yourself for a second. I'm gonna sing the way I sing it. And and the tune came to me. Because if you look at any kind of poem or prayer, you can you can into it and it really sticks and works nice breathing in breathing out breathing. i'm gonna do it i'm gonna do it breathing in breathing out breathing in breathing out i am blooming like a flower i am fresh as the dew i am solid as a mountain i am as the earth i am free I am free, I am free, breathing in, breathing out, breathing in, breathing out. I am water, reflecting what is real, what is true, and I feel there is space deep inside me. I am free, I am free. Free. We are free. We are free. We are free. All be free. All be free. All be free. <laughs> Next. There's Take Not On. He's the sweetest person, I swear. So here we go. We're going to be doing integrative wellness. You could be part of a team. You could be leading mindfulness. And you go, but I'm still half and half on my It's okay. Because when you teach, you grow. When you teach, you practice. When you teach, you prepare. Teaching puts you, put your neck out a little bit, and you really want to have your body underneath your neck when you're out there. Hey, mindfulness is a practice. Now get this, it's a joyful daily practice. I've heard people say, oh, I meditate, but it was awful. I'm a bad meditator. I, I, I don't think so. It's just that's how, I'm, that's your state of being. That's your state of feeling. Sit with it. It's okay. We want to connect with mindfulness tradition. This didn't just pop up today. Mindfulness teachers, mindfulness community, and Bowman Wellness is a mindful community. It's not only mindfulness, it's not only meditation, it's integrative wellness, but mindfulness is, is a present state of awareness and openness. Notice the consequences of being unmindful. Oh boy, that's a conversation piece. Well, you're bouncing off walls, you're saying to take back, you're confused, you're scattered. So it happens. But when you're off and it happens, notice, reset. I had a client, I checked in today. Hey, how's it going? She goes, oh, I'm tense. I'm, I'm kind of like having trouble. I go, it's just, a, I go one, two, three, reset, breathe, affirm, calm down, carry on. She did it in three minutes. She says, oh my gosh. I feel so much. That's pretty cool. So again, it doesn't have to be very complicated. Meditation is one mindfulness practice. It can be silent attention on the breath. There can be body scan. 
There can be mantra, which is a phrase, prayer, or blessing. There can be guided meditation, visualization, and affirmation. But mindfulness is truly the art of living and the art of loving. Think about that. We want to be living and we want to be loving. I'm a loving being today. I'm a living being today. I'm a, I'm a string being today. So let's just be the, in this space. And it comes from getting comfort zone, our center, and knowing where it lives and how it is and how it gets nourished. And the keys to deepening a practice, set a schedule, be faithful to your routine and your aspiration, and distinguish challenge, threats, and distraction. Whoo! Is that a challenge? Yeah, something I got to deal with. Is that a threat? Is that something that scares the living stuff out of me? Or is that really a distraction that I'm, or I'm choosing to be distracted. I'm choosing to have unmindful eating, unmindful movement, unmindful TV time, just check it out. And it's okay to relax, relax, problem. But these distractions can really become people's movie and they don't have their own inner life. So if you could unshare the screen, I'd like to take some comments on this concept of mindfulness as it's discussed here. New new ideas, old old reminders, anything. Mm -hmm. All right, I see Jennifer, and I'd like to see a couple more people in the queue. If you want to share on this, put your name in the queue because we're saying. Yeah, um, I said I wasn't going to talk about this, but I will. I took a class yesterday called Emotional and Disordered Eating. Oh, yeah. trauma, trauma informed clinical tools to heal your client's relationship with food and body. And I was telling Dr. B yesterday that the bottom line of this class was to help people heal was to become re embodied nice. was to start listening to their body again. And this is so much a part of mindfulness. Yes. And I needed to rewatch it to get all the details. But it really was taking time every day to even just like move each part to feel it, to roll uh -huh. your neck, to arch your back, move your legs and really pay attention to each part. Cause she said, the more people start listening to their body again and becoming aware of it, then they become aware of how other things affect it. And they start saying, Ooh, you know, that binging doesn't make me feel good. Right. I don't want to do that anymore. Cause they're paying attention again, but we've become so disembodied. But as soon as I, I rewatch this, if I get some of the skills, I'd be happy to share them with everybody. Uh -huh. But at the very last, least, just checking in and feeling how does it physically feel inside helps with the mindfulness and being aware. So that was just just my thought. Thank you. Sure. Who else? Who's got a mindful share? Ah, ah there's my wife. And then Thank Corey. You. Go ahead, Chris. I'm mute. No, no, I was just um, putting a thumb up to say, okay. yay, you know, You're digging uh, on that it. was good. All right, Corey. Yeah. Uh, first of all, yeah, I just want to add on to what Jennifer said. Yeah, I started uh, exploring mindful eating, you know, just really being mindful while you eat, really paying attention to the food and the flavors and the taste. And it, it really makes a difference. So I'm sure they probably got into that, but uh you know, I, you know, I realized from doing Qigong too, there's mindful movement. And when you're mindful about what you're doing and thinking about your intention that day, what you're going to work on, it's another application. So it's beginning to see how this applies to anything in, in, uh, in your life is Dr. B was just saying, so very relevant. Two more, two more shares, please. Somebody who doesn't usually share. There's two hands up. I don't okay? see them. So whoever it is, please share. I think jo Johan and myself. All right. Um, it made me feel good when I was listening to this interview with the Dalai Lama, huh? who, of course, is many, many decades of mindfulness. And he said, even for himself, if you have even a minute or 30 seconds of mindfulness, or just that pure being present, yeah. that you should feel good about that and count that as a victory. So when I heard that from the Dalai Lama, 
it made me feel a lot better. So I think it's uh, it's hard to do, and it's a lifetime. And so uh, even if it's for I, I, I don't know that it's hard to do. I just think we 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 tell ourselves that because we're not sort of practice in it. But you know, hey, maybe that was being judgmental. So that maybe I'm <laughs> unmindful. I'm, I'm, I'm showing I'm showing what not to do. But nevertheless, um, children are mindful because children are alive and in the moment. Uh, Mar Maria. Yeah, in, in my experience, um, the connection between movement and mindfulness is is very um, important because um, breath and movement can activate the parasympathetic response, which allows one to be more present and mindful. If our minds are full, it's a stress response. It's sort of a way that the mind is trying to protect us um you know because we're, we're disembodied right we're, we're living in our heads and in my personal experience because i've healed from multiple eating disorders yes when I, when I became a yoga teacher in 2005 that actually helped me to start living in my body sure. rather than in my head and so i think that the two often go hand in hand yes. and and i think another essential thing that is important i know when i teach mindfulness is to, is to, because sometimes people can beat themselves up that they're not able to get present. Yeah. But a lot of times that fight, flight, freeze has been activated from the time we've been in utero. And so it's a habit of the brain. And so the practice of being patient with yourself mm -hmm. and and using um, processes that can activate, again, the parasympathetic response and can help with mindfulness. Mm -hmm. Nice Thank you. Anyone else? I'll take, I think we can do one more. I would just say, look at those distractions. I'll get to you in a second, Linda. I would just say, look at the distractions and how much energy you put into them. And look at the insistent thought and how much energy it takes up in your mind. I, I again, I had a client today who had a revisit from an ex-husband, and she just said, "This guy is now in her head all the time," because he wanted to be. He wanted to be in her head, and now he's left, mm -hmm. and she's processing it out, which is natural. So, it's not always peaceful. It's not always gentle. It can be actually quite cathartic, but being able to sit with pain, sit with feelings, sit with triggered, and then let it come and let it go. And doing it together is so nice. Doing When you do practice together, it just makes it real special. Uh, Linda, and then we'll move on to the art. You're still mute, but you're, you're going to be unmuted. Can you hear me? Now you're good. Yeah. Okay. I was just thinking about, um, you know, mindfulness is like in so many areas of our life, just being conscious of our thoughts. Yeah. Like this morning, it's been really cold where I live and icy. Uh -huh. And um, so today, um, the it's blue skies, uh -huh. with some beautiful clouds and but it's, it's not raining, but it's still cold. And so I was like, <laughs> I, I started to leave without a jacket. Um, and and I was like, oh, I have to get a jacket. And at first I was like, I don't like this cold. And then I thought, I stopped myself and I thought, I'm so grateful it's not raining. And, and just being, it's like I reframed like a negative thought uh -huh. that, um, and looked to what I could be grateful for in the moment. And that's mm -hmm. small, but I oh, think so that um, catching our thoughts um, mm -hmm. like even the small ones, like they add up through the day and, you know, if, if we can head them off <laughs> before mm -hmm. they have us, we can have them. Nice. That's right. Good practice. So let's, uh, transit into expressive writing, and then we're going to do breakout groups where we can continue our conversation, mindfulness and expressive writing. Hey, thanks, Dr. B. 
Um, I've been having a little bit of internet connection issues, so hopefully I won't freeze fingers and can get through this. Quickly. Fingers crossed. Fingers crossed. Yeah. Oh, fingers crossed. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I just wanted to to revisit what we mean by expressive writing and then go through some uh, sample suggestions of things that you can do uh, with participants that you're working with. Um, so what's interesting about writing is like it tends to get put in the category of literature and people think of it as just limited to that category of literature. But really, because writing requires creativity, no matter what it is that you're writing, if it's a poem or song lyrics or a novel or even just journaling like in a diary, there's creativity involved in the process of writing. And I think it's very much falls within the um, creative expression and, and the arts um, in that respect. Um, and from a wellness kind of mental health perspective, um, what's really powerful about expressive writing is that particularly when we have any sort of bottled up emotion or unresolved feelings or like all the things that Dr. B mentioned about those triggers that occur mm -hmm. or the threats or the things that we feel are kind of weighing down on us. Sometimes, you know, we make an attempt to verbalize it. Sometimes we can articulate it very well. Other times it can become very jumbled and our mind is spinning and we're kind of just spitting stuff out and there's no structure to it. But being able to actually write it down helps to provide a framework and a structure for our thoughts. And it, when we get that when we get that structure, then it really helps gives us a broader perspective to be able to, again, like we do with all the other arts, to witness what did I just write and what am I learning from what I just wrote down and being able to kind of gain even a better perspective on how it is you're feeling through the process of writing it out. So I like to say that this activity isn't just writing even for other people, but even just writing for yourself, even if you're just um, writing a letter to yourself um, and, you, and you don't put it in the mail and send it to somebody else, but it's just for you, just that process of writing um, can really be beneficial to organizing our thoughts, releasing those feelings and helping to regulate those emotions and gain control over whatever's weighing on us in the Uh -oh. A little freeze up, a little freeze up. We'll just take that moment of the moment. Time. And it's also interesting to sort of trauma are actually um, by writing it down, um, they're able to improve both their physical and um, psychological health. Uh, so particularly if you're working with clients or participants that are facing trauma, that's going to be a really helpful um, art activity uh, to offer them. And then just to give a sample of uh, some activities that you can um, encourage participants, um, any sort of storytelling, again, even if they're just writing free form from their own mind and just kind of telling a story, <clears throat> storytelling is a really powerful way um, to kind of even get out of their own experience and create characters that are maybe having a similar experience. It's a way to kind of tackle that trauma or tackle that um kind of emotion that's happening that maybe it's too hard to write it about yourself, but putting it in the form of another character kind of gives a detachment to it or a disassociation from it to be able to write about it in an easier, less threatening way. Um, of course, some other examples, writing poetry, writing song lyrics, Got a freeze up. lyrics uh, journaling, um, a distant relationship with someone or you have like, um, you know, we're going to go into healing relationships next week. If you have sort of unresolved feelings or conflict within a relationship with someone, um, again, whether you ever put a stamp on it and put it in the mail, just the process of writing a letter to that person that expresses your feelings in that structured kind of organized way can really help you learn what it is that you need from that relationship and what it is that you need to ask for if there's something that you need to receive from that participant and that friendship that you're not receiving. Uh, so these are all uh, some, some powerful activities that you can do. And then I wanted to just share a couple of um, So I'll go ahead and pull that up as well. And again, these are just suggested activities um, that I that I learned um, through the, the center that I worked with, but I, I'm sure there's so many different activities
activities that you can um, curate, but just to give activities, these all come with guided prompts. So if any of of these kind of catch your interest and your interest, I'll type up the guided prompts and send that to you so that you have all those guided prompts. I think because of copyright, I can't produce like the entire lesson plan and send it over because it is copyrighted material, but I can write up the prompts for you and send that over to you if you want that. Um, this first activity is called Haiku for You, and you're asking your participants to write a three-line poem. And it's super easy because you get to tell your participants, guess what? I'm going to give you the first line of your poem. So you only need to write two lines of a poem. So your first line that you give them is, I am the one who. And that's the first line of the poem. And you just give that to your participants. I am the one who. And then your second prompt is you say, name something that you do every day. And then your third prompt is, name something that you find in nature. So when you give them those three prompts, you may end up with a poem that says something like, I am the one who drinks a cup of coffee out on my porch watching the squirrel climb my fence. Something really simple like that, right? Something they do every day, something that they see in nature. And then they have their three line poem. Um, so this is a really fun way to get them thinking about poetry but again, removes that barrier or inhibition of, I don't know what a real haiku is and how many syllables and how many lines and I can't think of what to write. It gets rid of all those barriers of writer's block because you're just giving them very simple prompts and then bada bing, bada boom, three lines later, they have a cute little poem. Another writing activity is called personifying feelings. And this is actually choosing an emotion and then writing a poem about that emotion. And some of the guided prompts there, so like say for example, let's say that you choose kindness as your um, feeling. You, you might say, what does kindness look like? What does kindness eat for breakfast? Um, what does kindness do every single day? Uh, what does kindness wear? What is the outfit that kindness wears every single day? So you kind of give, you kind of give mm -hmm. kindness hum, human, uh, human characteristics and you can just give them a bunch of prompts that include those kind of human characteristics. And then they get to write a poem that's all about what, you know, that virtue, what that feeling, um, how it eats, sleeps, drinks, and kind of goes about its uh, daily business. Um, so again, I've got some really fun kind of like prompts that, that bring out those human characteristics to write a poem about that feeling. And that's a very fun and again, sort of detached way to be able to really get to the bottom of, oh yeah, there's this emotion that's kind of welling up in me right now and I need to kind of look at it and think about what it is I'm feeling and why I'm feeling that way. This is kind of a, a fun, non-threatening activity to really get that emotion out and think about you know what it's doing in that moment. Uh, this next activity is called What's in a Name? Um, for those that are, and again, this is a teaser for social justice arts, which will be our final topic. Uh, but this is also um, a really personal um, activity that people can uh, write about their name and what they think their name means. All of us can go to Google and we can search the you know, true origin of our name. But this is an activity where we get to decide, well, what does it mean? So my name is Christina. What does that mean? Well, for me, it means I'm passionate. It means that I'm fun. It means that I suffer from anxiety sometimes. It means that I'm all these things and I can identify all these characteristics and aspects about who I am as a person and what that means for me. How, how, does, how does my name kind of symbolize who I am? And it's a way for participants to be able to share who they are um, because a lot of us feel like maybe we're not heard. Maybe we feel like we're not seen particularly if you're working with participants that are coming from marginalized communities, you're gonna have a lot of people that are facing that sense of not feeling heard and not feeling seen. So this activity is a great way for them to be able to say, I'm gonna tell you exactly who I am and what my name means and what I'm about. Um, so it can be a very empowering activity um, for individuals. And then this last one is one of my favorites. It's called Imaginary World Special Place. And it's sort of like asking your participants, 
what's your happy place? <laughs> and then once they kind of imagine, and that happy place can be a real place, you know, you might have somebody that says, my happy place is Disneyland, or my happy place is the gazebo in the park in my neighborhood. Or you might have somebody that says, you know, my happy place is this imaginary planet that I live on, you know, and I like to take a space shuttle there and live on this planet. They can imagine a um, imaginary place as well. Um, but whatever they decide as their secret imaginary special place, um, just kind of similar to the characteristics that we described in personifying feelings, you get them to sort of describe, well, what does this place look like? What are the smells? What are the sounds? Uh, what are the different things that you experience in this imaginary place? What are the activities that you can do in this imaginary place? And then also ask them, are you alone or are you with other people? And who are you with? What types of other people do you interact with when you're in this imaginary special place? So this sort of gives them, again, just sort of a vision of what sort of environment is conducive for them to uh, bring joy, to bring happiness, to, to really, again, we're thinking about increasing wellness. What is it that I need to be well? And this activity can kind of help identify what are those things that I need in my relationships with others or things that I need in my physical environment that will help increase my state of wellness. Um, so that's also a really um, fun activity that you can do um, with participants. Um, any just thoughts or feedback yeah. on any of these particular activities or have any of you yeah. um, worked with other writing activities um, that you would recommend that you want to share um, that can also be really powerful as a, a wellness tool? Oh, Chris, do you have your hand up? Oh, sorry. I thought, I thought Chris had her hand up. No. Oh. <laughs> um, yeah, be. So I'm not as artsy as I am wellness practicey. You know what I mean? And so I, I wanted to practice. So I, I was leading a group. I said to Christina, can you give me the hike? It really, it's pretty simple. When you get a good prompt, you go, here's the first line. Here's the second line. Here's the third line. And if you care to share it. And it was fun. And it worked. So I think sometimes getting getting this this sort of structure makes it kind of easy. And it's not about me showing my art. It's about us expressing ourselves and us being a little more open and, and free and in playing with our imagination. And also, on the other hand, it can be a deep sharing of, of deep suffering. So they're, they're, it's all there, but the writing itself has a has a wonderful uh, process and, and many of us write every day. I see Chris Bowman got a hand up. Go ahead, Chris. I have done a couple of different writing exercises where um, one of them was kind of to break the ice with people. Yep. So we, we would go on a journey and each person would add a line to the journey. Oh yeah. Oh, and, yeah. and that way it kind of broke the ice um, and we got to know each other better. And then also um, ha um, putting um, putting lines to a poem, um, taking that, taking a portion of a poem and then um, taking that and writing out a whole scenario or, or what you wanted to write or write a poem and that kind of thing and so it would it, the the poem the original poem would give you some ideas about what you could do mm -hmm. and it was very interesting to see how diverse people were and how how therapeutic and cathartic um and Vidu knows has I it was actually a, a workshop with Vidu oh. so anyway yeah, it was very, it was very good. Yeah. Yeah. And I've done the haiku one with yeah. Christina and it's really, really cool. It's really interesting to see what comes out of me and then what comes out of other people. Really cool. It's a good soul work to do this week is do the art. Put in the chat. 
I am the one who, line one, daily activity, line two, being in nature, line three, however she expressed it. And they could play with your kids, play with your friends, share. It builds it builds that kind of, hey, we're we're all humans here. We're we're mindful beings, playful beings. Other uses or comments? Ah, oh, we do, but it, she's a Bowman guest. I don't see her name. Interesting. Who is this Bowman guest? Sorry, it's Vidu here. Yeah. Um, yeah, I wanted to say that I, I work a lot with poetry. Um, and there's two approaches to working with poems. One is a pure poetry therapy approach where you feel the poem percolating within just by listening mm -hmm. and you see what arises for you and then you start to work with that along with the facilitator and the other one is through guided prompts and uh, what I've learned through my own practice is that I do much better in the pure poetry therapy approach um, but, but it really varies so you have to gauge with your participants whether they want a prompt or not and uh, so that's one thing. The other thing is, gosh, I mean, with the I'm the one who is, uh, you know, sort of the people, uh, the, the woman who created soul collage and collaging, right? To make cards, mm -hmm. they're eight by five and you put like an image in the foreground. Sorry, my lighting is a little stranger, but um, so, you know, just collaging, I think is very handy. So like making a deck of cards and this is a source card and this is a self card. And a, lo a lot of cards will fall in categories of animals who are companions or counsel, your psychology cards or your archetypes. And, and then you can do the I'm the one who process with those cards. And there's quite a few questions there. So and I think doing collage with friends is super fun. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I mean, I could go on and on, but uh, of yeah, thank you. Okay. Oh, I, I totally agree. I love collage. Mm. Yeah. I'm, I'm with you there. Well, let's go break out. Let's, let's mix people up. And, and the, the conversation piece is mindfulness and expressive arts. What'd you learn today? What are you going to practice this week? And how can you share it with others? Because we can always... Learn, practice, share. How many do you want in a group? Three, please. Okay, so then... And we'll go 10 minutes and then we'll come back. And I want everyone to make sure they get their time and get to know one another a little bit. And we can also talk about how we're dealing with difficulties because that's mostly what life is about is dealing with difficulties, dealing with challenges, dealing with threats, trying to quiet our mind. Okay, ready? Yeah. All right, here we go. Join, join, join. Join, join, join. I think I'll pause the recording. The two are uh, absolutely uh, important to to just learn about and to use together. Yeah, nice. Who was in your group? Oh, so let's see. Um, Name game. <laughs> yeah. Oh, let me. I'm sorry. Uh, let's see. We had two Christinas. Okay. We had a Jennifer. Was that our group? I think it was the, the four of us. It. That's about it. You know, two Christinas are better than one. Absolutely. We yeah. had fun. Uh huh. Excellent. Amber, how was your group? What was going down? Oh, well, we're all, we're all struggling with finding a mindful practice. Okay. <laughs> and so we did talk about we we were like, well, maybe we should have an accountability. And then we were all scared to have an accountability group because we're all afraid we won't do it. <laughs> well, that's honest. That's very yeah. good. That's very authentic, very down home. No problem. Uh, yeah, uh, having a partner really helps, really helps, because we're here to support each other and listen and then go, hey, let's sit together maybe for 
couple, three minutes in quiet together. That's all. Because we can always go back to the Johan Dalai Lama. A few seconds, a minute is, is, is good. Start small. Yeah. Who, who was in your group? Uh, Nadi, uh, Roxanne, and I. All right. Nadi, you want to bounce on that a little bit? Well, it was so interesting to be in that group and just hear, you know, what people are doing and, you know, how in some ways we're all so conversant and know the benefits, you know, and then Amber had been to Naropa as a Buddhist university, you know, yeah. so uh, it's just really, it's, it's yeah, it's, it's, it's great relief in talking about it, you know, because in real life, you, you don't talk to people about like, are you doing a meditation practice? Uh -huh. Are you managing to do it? You know? So yeah, you know, we we could surprise each other, and okay. do an accountability. You know, I mean, don't make it <laughs> heavy. Scared of it. <laughs> call it support. Call it partnering. Call it, you know, accountability sounds like you're an accountant and you're going to fail. Yeah. Yes. And there's no failure in this program, unless you don't do homework. Oops. Anywho, uh, Roxanne, do you have anything to add to that uh, sort of state of of being that mindful conversation you three had because that was very mindful yeah it was a good conversation i think it was nice it was nice to reflect on the fact that it's it's hard to be it's hard to remember to do it i think was the was the biggest thing like i know that there is time but we don't necessarily make the time to um okay i wanted i want to add something for you guys to remember mindfulness is not meditation Mindfulness is I'm aware, I'm present, I'm noticing sensations, thoughts, and feelings, and I'm curious. And you're all mindful. And in this class, you could check your attention meter. Was I 100% attentive, 90, 80, 70, 60? And you can know, you know, I'm not quizzing you on it. It's like, yeah, I was really 90% attentive here and 10% I whoop, spaced out. That's mindfulness. So it's doing one thing, and that is very hard because we're in a multitasking culture. We have all this different kinds of screen activity, a lot of fast, fast, fast. Mindfulness is the opposite of scrolling. <laughs> and so again, I think a lot of us are talking about meditation. I, I need to set my meditation. I need to sit on the pillow. I need to hit the timer, which is fine. But saying to yourself, let's calm down, reset, breathe, notice, love. Thank you. We can practice that. And we do. We don't give ourselves enough credit for that. Ah, uh, who else? Christina was in group. What about Tom? What was, what was your circle like, Tom? I was with Vidu. Oh, yeah. We kind of talked about several things, kind of led from mindfulness to meditation to what um what I do, what I've done, what she's done. I've done a vipassana before for 10 days and that was that was very challenging. Mm -hmm. Um and for her, she has a different mm -hmm. similar but different technique that she uses. Sure. And for the creative writing part. Um, she she showed me today what she did before she came mm -hmm. here to Zoom, and she was doing a collage. Yeah. So I'm very unfamiliar with collages and working in the dream world. So that was like interest to me. But I know that writing, journaling, is something that I've wanted to do just to kind of explore my mind, and I've been really putting that off for a long time. So how about, how about this week? Say I'm going to start my writing practice, my expressive writing practice and do it in the morning or do it before bed, you know? That would be good with I my mean, accountability again, it, it, partner. Knowing, knowing those times of days are your time. It's your time in the morning when you get up and you can give yourself five, 10, 15 minutes, whatever you want to give yourself before you look at the news, before you get into the whole daily activity thing. And then before bed, it's really nice to take some time for yourself to reflect, write, express, think, show gratitude. 
and mm -hmm. scribble because I write a couple of times a day. I don't write that much, but it it's it makes me it helps me unpack and helps me let go and go to sleep. And then I offer prayers for my loved ones and ask for continued guidance and protection. And in doing that every day, I have strength, guidance, and protection because I ask for it. And I actually said a prayer for the 49ers when they were getting quit, and the game changed. So I'm not saying it was me, but there's, there's power up there, so we're working with it. Uh, who else hasn't shared much today? Hey, Heidi, well, who are you with? Hi, I was uh, with Maria and Johan. Yeah. Um, that was actually very interesting. I guess we didn't talk much about mindfulness. <laughs> we talked about future plans. Oh, that it's doesn't sound like Very exciting that's... too. <laughs> I think there is a lot I can learn from Maria. So I'm excited to connect. All right. Um, yeah. All right, who hasn't uttered much of a sound? Nagin, share your experience today or your hopes for the week to come, your plans, briefly. Um, sure, I can talk about what we discussed during our um, breakout room. We talked briefly about journaling and how that is a mindfulness practice that um, I think each of us had a practice of at some point, sometimes with prompts, um, sometimes by maybe meditating on, on a mystical, maybe spiritual or inspirational oh, yeah. quote. Uh -huh. um, then we also discussed movement and how, you know, just that, again, that feeling embodied. So waking up and just moving, stretching, allowing your body to f move freely. Um, that's one other thing we discussed. I, yeah, for I don't you, remember. What's, what... the, what's the practice goal for you this week, given your for me? very busy so specific... life and all you do? Yeah. So specifically, actually, the journaling is okay. it, it, it was a habit that I had down packed and it was every morning for 15, 20, 30 minutes while I had my coffee. And it just helped me set my day straight. Like my my thoughts were clear. I knew, you know, I, my my emotions were in the right place and it was guided by this um i don't know if you're aware of this psychologist her she goes by holistic psychologist and she's got like three four five prompts of you know you start with what are some things you're grateful for and you know what is something you want to work on and what's the best way your day could go and so it's it's just a really nice way to start my day and so my hope is to my goal is to do that three times this week so not not every day because i find if i set too many goals i have i'm more likely to fail at it okay. <laughs> and then i i get disappointed and i might give up so um, three days a week is the goal well i support you i believe in you i see you doing it thank you it's good as done cheryl okay. can you can you utter a few phrases for us to complete our circle Yes, thank you. <clears throat> Excuse me, I'm a bit hoarse. The oh. um, I appreciate a chance to contribute, and I have enjoyed listening. Um, I think that the reflection that I have is that as a facilitator in training, I have a great appreciation for how much commitment it takes to really to oneself to have a mindfulness practice and to um, even to to do some concrete things like journaling or or just sitting still for a few moments every day it takes a huge commitment and i um because i'm evaluating my ability to do it and to not do it in the context of wanting to be able to facilitate others um to be able to encourage others to have um a, this as a priority realizing how difficult it is to really commit for your for your own well-being is a kind of a revelation and I think that's kind of the missing ingredient that a lot of us have when it comes to self-care is being as committed to that as we are to the other things in our lives and um, I think figuring out a way to make people make that to really show up for their own needs um, would be really powerful if you can find a way to do that. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. So everyone shared today. 
I think Christina Kinder, did you share? If not, why don't you open up the the video and say hi, or just speak through the through the camera? Hi. Yes. No, I um thought I did share. Uh, I share had <laughs> I had a good group, and I actually learned. Um, I have to slow down, yeah, and I'm yeah. learning how to slow down breathing is a really good indicator if I'm talking too much fast and editing my thoughts. I'm in this process where I think very fast and I'm always kind of, I'm like always 20 feet, uh, 20 spaces. <laughs> See, I'm doing it now, right? I'm, uh -huh. I'm thinking over here and I still can't even explain it here. Yeah, so, thank you for bringing this to our attention. <laughs> well, I figure if I slow down, I can learn. I guess what I'm trying to say is I've learned a lot today. If I can take this and apply it, and start as you it. as you take today and apply it, you will change your pattern. <laughs> Not if, no ifs. It's just yeah, I I I know what I need to do. I'm going to do it. I, right. I you know in your own way, in your own time, in your own space for your own benefit. I just get too excited, and then I want to I want to explain, and I want to talk so much, and so it's better for me just to listen and have a smile on my face. So thank there you. <laughs> I love that. That's beautiful. Hey, Aisha. <laughs> well, I think we had a great session. And to me, in facilitating a group, the best group is when everybody shares. The worst group is when the facilitators or the teachers eat up all the time. So my goal today was to, to be able to create time and space and create circle and create uh, support. So even the people who go, boy, I'm terrible at this, <laughs> could say that. And then I could say, you're not so bad, really. Mm -hmm. You're not so bad, really. And it's paying attention. And then it, there's all kinds of different levels and possibilities to it. So here's a, a request. Spend time catching up on your soul work because it's you're doing it, you're not writing it, you're not posting it. And a, and a few paragraphs, even a few sentences of authentic statement of practice and art is good. And then say, well, I really didn't do much art, but I'm thinking about doing art. I'm in contemplation mode, pre-contemplation mode, first step mode. Hey, I did something now this week. This expressive writing is a winner for all of us. This week, we can all do expressive writing. And it's not that I just want you to check boxes, but being in a training, you've got to keep up. And the, we're on the fourth lesson of six. It's getting pretty good, and it's starting to fit together. And I hope that it's growing you. I hope that you're seeing yourself as you truly are, as you truly can be. And look, when something gets in your face that rattles your cage and you go, uh uh, I see that one. I'm going to just take some space, let it be, decide how I'm going to respond or not. And when you have those moments, it's extremely empowering. And if you see other people who are just losing it, you go, hey, how about you take a moment or two and we can breathe together. We can calm down together. Wanna to do that? And they go, yeah, 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 yeah. So that's the, that's the application of facilitation. You don't have to have a circle. You have to have a situation that needs more mindfulness. And if somebody is going on and on and on, you go, excuse me, but a little too much. Could we have a pause? Could we have a reflection? Could we look at this with love and gratitude and appreciation. So there you go. Uh, what Christina was kind enough to say and do, and she will because she does her stuff, is she'll write up a prompt on how to how to or a couple of these other things. Well, Sorry. if you if you can actually if if there is a particular activity that you want the props for, just shoot me an email and I'll send you the prompts for that particular activity. 
So just shoot me an email it. if you want that. It's good to post it. Even if one person says, could you help me if we post it, it's there for others who catch yeah. up. Yeah, we're, we're kind of doing it on the down low. So send, send oh, me an email I mean, and I'll make sure you get it. Yeah. Her statement is, you know, I'm basing this on, on work from um, UCLA Arts, what's it called? Uh, it's UCLA Arts and Healing. Yeah, and so we don't want to rip them off but we can adapt and give acknowledgement, so. Well, all right, breathing in, breathing out. I am free, I am free, I am free. So if you really hit the wall, you go breathing in, breathing out. I am free, I am free, I am free. And you say that a few times and you actually are breathing in and breathing out and you actually are free. And and that that other poem or song, it's, it's sweet. You, you know, you're strong as a mountain and fresh as the dew. and all that good stuff. And and when we when we say these things to ourselves, we allow ourselves to step into that space. So I, I, I get a lot of mileage out of that one. Namaste. Namaste. Oh. Bye guys. <laughs>